Hey Wilder folks, Alicia here. Ooh, don't know what's happening with that. That's okay. Um, I'm halfway through my trail run today and this is my lunch spot. Ooh, so pretty. Twin Lakes, Waterton National Park. You gotta come visit. Uh, but I have had on the agenda for a long time filming a video talking about how to run downhill more easily. And I thought that now was the perfect time to talk about it. So let's get right into our tips and tricks for you. My first tip is to take more steps on that downhill. So you might be tempted to take long, slow steps to try and slow down, but if you want to be less sore and also to be at a lower risk of rowing, rowing an ankle, rolling an ankle, then you're gonna wanna take more steps on your downhill. I'll often play the game where we take an artificially high number of steps as we're going down, and then that makes taking slightly more feel way more natural. So that's a good one, take more steps on your downhill. The second one is super tied into the first, and that's to reduce your ground contact time. So I like to pretend that the ground is lava. I'm trying to just touch the ground on my way down. I'm not trying to stay with my foot on the ground for a really long time. So quick steps mean less eccentric contraction, mean less sore muscles the next day, and also a safer weight down. The third tip is to land with your foot underneath your center of mass. So if I'm landing with my foot way out in front of me, then I am having to break this whole time and I'm near the end of my range of motion through my ankle and knee, which means I have less wiggle room if I need to adapt to the ground underneath me. So let's say there's a rock that makes my ankle have to move out slightly, or there's a change in pitch and I'm actually going at a steeper angle than I was just a second ago. If I've got my foot out in front of me, I have less range of motion through my knee, um, through my ankle, and likely through my hip to play with that and react to that situation. Whereas if I'm, obviously this is my leg in the situation, but if I am in, if I have my foot landing underneath my hip, now I have a lot of wiggle room through the knee and the ankle and the hip to deal with that situation. Tip number three, four is tighten your core and think of your core and your torso as your base and your legs as wheels underneath you. So this tip I find really helps. It helps people do the first two things, those quick steps and those lots of steps. Um, but the other thing it'll help people do is just tighten your pelvic floor and your core slightly so that no matter what rocks and roots and changes in pitch you're dealing with, you feel like you're totally in control of the situation. And if you need to unweight a foot because it's a different angle than you thought it was, it's easy for you to do that because your core is tight and you are ready to react. When I have a powerful or a solid base being my core, then I have more range of motion and more reactivity available through my hip, my knee, and my ankle. Tip number five has to do with pitch. So I used to tell people, lean forward on your hills. And what I meant by that actually was different dependent on the pitch. So if it is a super, super, super steep hill, then you actually are gonna wanna sit your weight back a little bit. You're gonna wanna bend at the hip. You're gonna have more weight through the heels and a slight bend through the knee at all times. Let's see if I can get to a spot where I can go. So super steep hill, bend here, weight the heels slightly, take quick steps. Looks silly, will save your muscles. If it is not that steep of a downhill, so maybe a well-established trail downhill or just a slight pitch, uh, then you don't need to bend at the waist. In fact, that's leaking power if you do that. And instead, you want to think straight line and still landing with those feet underneath you. So you lean forward with the hip if it's a little bit of a grade. And if it's a very steep grade, you want to do that thing where you're just pitching forward slightly at the waist. Uh, this comes with experience as to when you should do one technique versus the other. And another tip, and I forgot to include this one when I was down having lunch, so I stopped and I'm going to talk about it now, is when you're running downhill, 
instead of trying to go straight down the fall line, and this is a little counterintuitive, if you whoops, try and go a little lateral with your steps, you're going to be using different muscles and you're going to be moving your center of mass back and forth, which will effectively slow you down without as much effort and energy as if you were trying to slow down while going directly down the fall line. Think of skiing, how we turn to slow down. That is what we're doing when we move laterally instead of just trying to break straight ahead of us. And the final tip is to notice if you're getting tired. If your steps sound like an elephant or your low back is pitching forward, might be a sign to take a rest and reassert these tips. And those are my biggest tips for making running downhill easier. Practice makes perfect. Make sure you're staying safe out there. And uh, don't be afraid to ask a friend how you look or to take video and watch how you run and try and play around with some different changes. Running is simple, but there's tiny tweaks we can make that have a huge difference on how everything feels. And that certainly is true when it comes to running downhill. All right, I think that's it. I am gonna go finish my run and I get to do the downhill portion now. I hope you have a wilder week and we'll see you guys next time.